314. Hey, Miles here at Tactical Hive, and today we're going to cover some rifle techniques. Specifically, we're going to address if you encounter the issue where your red dot, or perhaps you're shooting irons, and your front sight or your red dot are really moving all over the place, much more than you would like. So I'm going to share a really great technique that you can use that's going to help you minimize the movement of your red dot or your front sight when shooting your rifle. So stay tuned. Before we get to today's video, we want to thank our sponsor, Laser Ammo, and specifically talk to you guys about the flash bolt that they provide. They offer a really great product that allows you to use your rifle and it will automatically reset the trigger. It also emits a laser with every shot. And there are different options out there in the market, but what's unique about the flash bolt is that it doesn't require you to use a magazine or battery powered magazine. So this means that you can do mag changes while using the flash bolt. So you have that reset of your trigger, you have that laser, and now you can do mag changes. So check them out in the description below. All right, let's get to the meat of the video. When you learn how to shoot a rifle, I would say that the vast majority of instructors out there, particularly three to five years ago, and it still happens today, are going to have you use your support hand to help control the rifle in terms of driving it into your shoulder. So this left hand will pull into your shoulder. And you know a lot of people will talk about different reasons why, primarily recoil management, keeping that rifle steady. And when I was shooting rifle a lot uh, when I first started, there, you know, I had a lot of problems with my dot moving all over the place. There was just a lot more movement than I felt there should be. So my split times were, were definitely slower and my accuracy was all over the place because I didn't have the patience to wait for my red dot to be on target before breaking the shot. So my accuracy would be affected too. And I would ask everybody, I asked tons of people as to how I can solve the issue. And it would always come down to a combination of pulling my arm in more, driving the shoulder, squaring up, a lot of different techniques and um, principles and concepts that are very common out there. But it wasn't until I trained with uh, Joel Turner from the Army Marksmanship Unit, this was maybe about three years ago, that he showed a technique to me and almost instantly improved everything. It was like night and day. And so I wanna share that technique with you today. We typically share this technique only in our in-person classes, but now that we're seeing this technique out in the wild more I want to share it with you so this technique is very different from a lot of what other instructors are teaching again that technique of pulling this rifle into the shoulder and there's a time and place for that as well but overall when I was working on my specific shooting like offhand shooting I might be stationary here and I'm trying to minimize the dot movement what Joel shared with me really changed everything and that was to simply just use my support hand here as a bookshelf so it didn't do anything. All it does is it holds the rifle up just like this. It just is a resting place and it doesn't do anything else. And where the backward pressure comes from is a bit from the firing hand. So I am pulling the bootstock into my shoulder with my firing hand. But again, this is just here, my support hand. And so what we did was a drill at 50 yards. I was shooting BC steel and I did it my way where the traditional way where I'm pulling into my shoulder and I'm, we took five shots. And I can't forget the time, it was over three years ago, but it was much slower than when I just rested the rifle on my support hand and started taking five shots from 50 yards. I don't remember exactly how much time was cut off, but it was by a lot. And that's when the light bulb moment went off for me. I was training with Joe and I was just like, wow, I mean, that solved my issue just like that. And so I was wondering why when putting in a lot of pressure into the shoulder, there would be more moving my dot versus the other way around. And then I realized that under recoil, whenever you're shooting, there's a lot of movement happening with this gun. And if you're not very strict and you, you really make the tiniest movement while you're pulling in, you can inadvertently move the gun as well during shots, in between shots. Whereas if I'm just leaving my support hand here as a shelf, this isn't giving a lot of input into the rifle and it's allowing the gun to do what it's going to do. Whereas again, I'm gonna exaggerate if I was shooting down here, okay? Just so you can see the top here, I might inadvertently as I'm pulling in, I might actually pull it too much like this. 
right? And now that shot's gonna go off. So the idea here is to use your firing hand to again pull the bootstock into your shoulder and your support hand is just laying flat there and just let your rifle rest. This way you're going to minimize the movement of your dot because you're not adding extra input, which again can happen before, during, or after the shot when you're taking rapid fire shots. This technique really fixed my issue of that dot moving all over the place, so absolutely give it a try. So as I mentioned earlier, I forgot the time difference between the two techniques, using the support hand to drive in and not. So I'm gonna test it out today. We'll go do the same thing I did last time with Joel and we'll look at the differences. So I have a BC steel target, dial range about 50 yards, and what I'm going to do so that this is an equal test here is I'm going to take a shot or five shots in a row using both methods. First, where I'm really driving in with my shoulder and I'm going to wait until the dot settles before I break a shot. So there's consistency so that there's not deviation in waiting for the streak because that could be a little bit different. So I'm going to wait till that dot settles, break the shot, wait till the dot settles, break the shot. And I'll do that for both methods. And then we're going to go compare the times. The second method should be faster because there's going to be less movement with that dot all over the place, right? So I'm going to start already on target and I'm going to take five shots on the buzzer and then we will reset for the other method where I'm just using my support hand as a bookshelf. So here we go. All right. So that was four, two, three. And what I did was I waited for the dot to literally settle and rest there, then break the shot. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing now with the different method and see how much time we save. So now to reiterate, I'm now just keeping this there as a bookshelf. I'm not adding input. So here we go. Okay, here we go, second method. All right, well, after the first shot, the target died, so we're just gonna play off of that. It's obviously gonna be on a slant now, but I'm gonna do the same thing, wait for it to settle, take those five shots, and we'll see what the time difference is. Okay, here we go. All right, so five shots. And so that's a three, five, five. So it's definitely faster. And it, the, the angle of the target really shouldn't matter because I was waiting for just a dot to sell in the middle. And you can see basically, you know, roughly a second difference where I'm just letting it hang right here. And there's less movement because I'm not driving into my shoulder. So like I said, there's gonna be cases where you wanna use this technique, but if you're offhand shooting out here, you're stationary, this isn't really needed driving in. You can just rely on using your firing hand to pull that buttstock into your shoulder. I hope you guys like that technique. Give it a try out. It really changed everything for me when I realized that I didn't have to put a lot of inputs with that support hand. There was less movement I dot. I could shoot faster and more accurately. So give that technique a try and let me know how it goes for you in the comments below. As always, if you like the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.